so hello everybody now since we have completed the topic of rheology which includes the basics of rheology different types of viscometers and um, thixotropy or the time dependent rheological properties let us now discuss the mcqs all inclusive of these topics so let us begin question 1 who quantitatively studied the flow properties of liquid bingham crawford newton or huckel so here you all can pause the video and take time to answer the question you can resume it and then we shall have a discussion so the answer is newton newton was the one who uh, studied the flow property of liquid and later quantified it he was the that is why there are two types of fluids newtonian or non newtonian crawford was the one who uh, coined the term rheology bingham is the one who studied plastic bodies so that is why they are also called as bingham bodies huckel and bulkley are other pair of scientists who studied different a different set of uh, fluid question 2 bingham bodies exhibit dash flow so the answer is bingham bodies exhibit plastic flow as i told you all in the earlier question uh, bingham is a scientist who studied plastic bodies the different types of plastic flow uh, and that is why the bodies which exhibit the bodies or the fluids or the material which exhibit plastic flow are also called as bingham bodies question 3 which of these do not follow non newtonian flow so the key here is do not follow the answer is nacl injection or sodium chloride injection this is because uh it follows newtonian law now the materials or the fluids which follow newtonian flow they are the most simplest form of fluids or solutions they are low molecular weight or they are plain solvents okay now something which is more complex or which is more concentrated or which has more uh high molecular weight substances polymers and which are more con uh Uh, viscous and which are more uh, concentrated they follow non newtonian flow such as kalamine suspension or emulsions and ointment these all follow non newtonian flow so the one which does not follow non newtonian flow is nacl injection so this was an applicative type of question question 4 the force per unit area f dash per Uh, by a which causes flow is called as what so force per unit area f dash per a which causes flow so the force which causes flow is called as the answer here is shear stress the force which causes flow is shear stress if it was only force per unit area that is pressure but the force per unit area which causes flow is called as shear stress and the rate at which it happens is shear rate fluidity and viscosity is nothing but uh, if there is if the fluid exhibits resistance to flow that is viscosity and the ease or the ability of a fluid to flow is called as fluidity the answer here is shear stress now shear stress is applied uh, tangential to the surface okay tangential to the surface and pressure or compression is applied perpendicular to the surface okay question 5 herschel bulkley systems exhibit which of these flows so the answer is plastic pseudo plastic flow okay it is uh, by and large a combination of plastic and pseudo plastic flow like plastic requires a yield value to start flowing okay and a pseudo plastic has a curve like this its viscosity in pseudo plastic viscosity 
decreases as the shear stress increases. So similarly in Herschel Bulkley systems also, it requires a yield value like the plastic system and like the pseudo plastic system, even its, even its uh, viscosity will decrease with increase in shear stress. So coming to question 6, dash systems exhibit increase in viscosity with increase in shear. So here the answer is D. Dilatant system exhibit increase in viscosity with increase in shear stress. In pseudoplastic, the viscosity will decrease and in Herschel Bulkley also viscosity will decrease uh, when you increase the shear stress. Question 7. Which of these deal with bioreological systems? So the answer is A. Herschel Bulkley uh, systems uh, deal with bioreological type of systems. Okay. Example your blood. Your blood is a biological system whose rheological property will belong or will can be ca classified under Herschel Bulkley systems. Question 8. Which of these flow at all given shear stress? This can have multiple answers. So, pseudoplastic and dilatant will flow at all shear stress. Plastic and Herschel bulkly require a yield value. So, if you all remember the topic which I taught you all, Herschel bulkly will also flow somewhere like this. And a plastic system will flow like this, right? So, although unka uh, rheological rheogram allag hai, but it will require a certain stress value. That stress value is called as a yield value. So, only after it attains that shear stress, it will start flowing. Okay? If uh, the stress value is less than that, it won't flow. But pseudoplastic and dilatant will flow at every uh, shear stress. Haan, iska viscosity kam hoga or iska viscosity badega as you increase the shear stress. But yes, it will flow, right? So, these two are the wrong answers. Question 9. Which is a time dependent rheological property? Even this can have multiple answers. So, the answer is rheopexy and thixotropy. So, these two are also a subclassification of rheological property, but their property or their, or their rheology will change with time. Okay, so in thixotropy, uh, the system will be converted from a gel to a sol. Okay, liquefy hoga. Gel se wo sol mein hoga. Example, your toothpaste. Initially, it is gel. When you apply shear stress it will flow okay so that is uh, thixotropy but for certain time it will remain fl uh, fluid after that it will again retain its gel like state okay and in rheopexy it's uh, different uh, it's the opposite initially it was sol and then it will become gel like okay so it will solidify but even that will be for a particular time then it will again regain its sol like property Temperature is directly proportional to viscosity. So, is temperature directly proportional to viscosity? The answer is no. False. As the temperature increase, as the temperature increase, the viscosity will decrease. Fluidity will increase. Okay. Fluidity which is denoted as phi, that will increase. But uh, viscosity will decrease. Okay, as you increase the temperature, viscosity will decrease. So, it is not directly proportional, it is indirectly proportional. So, coming to question 11, which of these is defined as the flow of liquids or deformation of solids? The correct answer is rheology. This is the definition of rheology. 
So rheology is nothing but the flow of liquid or deformation of solid. Now thixotropy and rheopexy are time, de time dependent rheological property. And viscosity is also the uh, resistance of a fluid to flow. Okay. But a flow of fluids and uh, deformation of solids is nothing but rheology. Question 12. What is true about a non-Newtonian fluid? So, it, the answer is C. It has a shear dependent viscosity. That means its viscosity is not constant at a particular shear stress. As the shear stress changes, its viscosity will also change. So, which it means that its viscosity is dependent on the shear stress. Alright. Now, its rheogram is a straight line passing through origin. That is false. Okay. That this is true for a Newtonian system. A Newtonian system, uh, the rheogram for a Newtonian system will look like a straight line which is proportional. Shear stress is proportional to shear rate and it will pass through origin. But for non-Newtonian system, it will be different. Like say this is for plastic system. Okay, it's not passing through zero. Although it's a straight line, it's not passing through zero. It will pass, on, it will move only from a certain yield value or say pseudoplastic, dilatant system. All of those are non-Newtonian system. It deals with micromolecular components. No, even this is true for a Newtonian system. But the question is asking for non-Newtonian system. So, Newtonian system will deal with micromolecular components. That is why NaCl injection is a Newton will follow Newtonian flow. So, the correct answer here is C. Question 13. Which system exhibit thixotropy? As I told you all in the earlier question, thixotropy is nothing but a gel to salt transition. Initially, it is gel. Then, on shear stress, uh, it will become salt. That is more fluid. But that will be for a certain time, time dependent. So, the answer here is A. Shear thinning systems. Okay? Shear thinning systems will uh, exhibit thixotropy. That is, as you increase uh, shear, it, its viscosity will decrease, gel to salt. But then, uh, but again, on removal of that, it will come back to the gel state. Now, deflocculated system exhibit rheopexy. Okay. Coming to question fourteen, salt to gel transformation and seen in which of these? There can be multiple answer here. So, salt to gel transformation is seen in system exhibiting anti-thixotropy. Salt to gel, abhi ulta hai. Matlab, initially it is more fluid, but then shear stress apply karne pe, it will become a little solid, gel-like. So, it is exhibited by uh, anti-thixotropic systems and systems which exhibit rheopexy. Okay, so both of these are salt to gel, but is may difference kya hai? Rheopexy will be shown by flocculated system. Okay, flocculated system and anti thixotropy will be shown by sorry, rheopexy will be shown by deflocculated system. Okay, it will be shown by deflocculated system and anti thixotropy will be shown by flocculated system. So, that is the difference between rheopexy and anti thixotropy. Rheopexy will be shown by deflocculated system, anti thixotropy will be shown by flocculated system. On to question number 15 Which instrument help in determination of viscosity? So, the answer is capillary viscometer, obviously. Okay, a capillary viscometer or a Oswald viscometer will help in determination of viscosity. Tensiometer will tell you about the interfacial tension. Capillary rise method will tell you about the uh, surface tension. Question 16. Which of these is a Kuwait type viscometer? So, if you all have gone through the lecture slides, 
or the lecture presentations i have discussed i have given lots of flow charts which uh, describe different instruments belonging to the newtonian systems uh, viscometers or instruments which help in determining non uh, newtonian fluids different types of non newtonian fluids okay so please go through that so here kuwait type viscometer is called the proprietary name is mac michael viscometer okay so this is the correct answer you all can find out what is a hopler ferranti shirley and a hack roto viscometer coming to question 17 viscosities of non newtonian systems cannot be measured by non newtonian system ka viscosity cannot be measured by what let us see kin kin se we can measure non newtonian system rotational viscometer se we can measure non newtonian spindle se bhi we can measure and rheometers are meant actually meant for non newtonian system so these two are type of rheometers okay so the option here is b falling sphere viscometer cannot measure non newtonian system okay the correct answer is b this is used for newtonian system all right this is used for newtonian system question 18 select the false statement which of these is false let us look at it one by one single point viscometer is used for newtonian systems yes so a single point viscometer is a viscometer which operates at only one shear stress okay so newtonian system ke liye bhi one shear stress chahiye because it is directly proportional right so single point is used for newtonian system correct single point viscometer has a shear rate proportional to shearing stress yes that is why it is used for newtonian system okay डायरेक्ट प्रपोर्शनैलिटी आती है उसका रियोग्राम भी ऐसा दिखता है स्ट्रेट लाइन पासिंग थ्रू ओरिजिन ओके सुविन दैट इज राइट सिंगल पॉइंट विस्कोमीटर ऑपरेट्स एट वेरिएबल शेयरिंग रेट सो दिस इज रॉन्ग राइट फर्स्ट ऑप्शन ए ही बोल रहा है कि सिंगल पॉइंट विस्कोमीटर इज यूज फॉर न्यूटोनियन सिस्टम एट वन पॉइंट एंड सिंगल पॉइंट इट सेल्फ टेल्स यू सिंगल पॉइंट माने के वन शेयर स्ट्रेस so single point viscometer operates at variable shearing rate that is false let us look at question uh, option d shear rate is not proportional to shear stress in multiple viscometer even this is right actually in multi point viscometer also shear rate is not proportional to shear stress that is why multi point viscometer is used for non newtonian system so both of these are correct okay so single point viscometer operates at variable shearing stress this is wrong it does not operate at variable shear stress it operates at only one shear stress and shear rate is not proportional to shear stress in a multi point viscometer So option C and D are correct for question number eighteen. So with this, we complete our uh, topic of rheology, which is inclusive of different uh, types of rheology systems: Newtonian, non-Newtonian systems, different types of viscometers, viscometers used for Newtonian and non-Newtonian systems. different type of rheological flows like pseudo plastic plastic dilatant and also the discussion about time dependent rheological properties like um uh, thixotropy and rheopexy so i hope you all understood this topic and you all enjoyed learning with us so thank you and i will see you in the next lecture topic